Okay, so we continue. Now we uh, examine the uh, invasion of uh, two differential operators. One of the most typical uh, operation we are able to do with uh, differential operators. You take uh, a symbol A of order M in the classical uh, class SM of Ramonda, and you assume that it is globally elliptic. That means the symbol is bounded by below by exactly one plus uh, chi uh, to the power m, think to Laplacian. Laplacian doesn't satisfy this estimate. It satisfies this estimate for xi large. So you can uh, construct the parametrics of the operator A on the left and on the right. I mean, you can find a, a symbol B1 and B2 uh, uh, such that the composition is exactly the identity plus a reminder which is infinitely smoothing. R and R prime are uh, in op of S minus infinity. I didn't yet prove that uh, this kind of symbols gives you an, uh, an, operator, an operator which is infinitely smoothing. We will do it just after this uh, theorem. The proof is a simple uh, technique of uh, uh, symbolic calculus. You take the symbol A, you know it satisfies this estimate. We know that this function is also a symbol. That's in the name. The inverse of A, an operator B1 that satisfies this exactly. This identity is called parametrics. Left or right. The difference between the two is uh, an infinitely smooth in operator. So uh, 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 that, that was done in the first slide about symbols. When a symbol A in this class satisfies this electricity estimate, the inverse is also a symbol in the class S minus M. You can, you can taste it. Just by derivation. Okay, so C1 is a symbol in the class S minus M. And it, it satisfies by symbolic calculus. The product C1, the product is equal to one, but at the level of operators, you don't have identity exact uh, between operators. You have identity modulo some uh, uh, reminder uh, that is uh, R is, of course, in the step after S minus one. Because I just, I recall here the composition when you, when you calculate, so C1 is this symbol. Okay, so you compose now two operators. It's equal to up of C1 ds A, and we know this symbol. It's an asymptotic expansion. Remember that this uh, 
is exactly the sum of uh, alpha uh, the psi alpha c1 x alpha a there is some uh, power of i i'm not sure plus or minus N no problem okay of x and d and of course so for alpha equal to one it's the product uh, to zero is the product c1 a and i know that this operator is exactly up of the first term i mean up of c1 times a plus the first and the index i forget I stop at alpha equal to one. So here you have of order SM of order S minus M minus one. So it will be, this is symbolic calculus. We pr proved this fact. So this is equal to one by the choice of C1. And now you use uh, the Neumann theory. R minus R is of order minus one. So you know that if you consider this operator, this, uh, I start with a symbol, C, DS, C1, DS, A of X and D. When you compose, this is the symbolic calculus. This is in this slide. Here. Composition. When you take two to differential operators with symbols A1, A2, respectively in SM1, SM2, when you compose, that is, this is a two differential operator with symbol B of X and C that is given by, so I forgot uh, the factorial alpha. Okay? So I keep just the first term. So I'm sure the difference is of order minus one. You see here, you start with alpha equal to zero. You have the product of the two symbols. Starting from alpha equal to one, length one, you are in S minus one. So the operator is in up of S minus one. That is the, 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 the symbol R I have. You are sure that C1 composed with A is exactly identity plus with R Uh, in S minus one. Sure, I lose, I, I mean, I gain one derivative. 
here we get one derivative because when you apply r is of order minus one r we send we map h s h m in h m plus one we get one derivative it's one degree smoothing we will use this fact so I will I will write like this just to use this area what I claim is that you take your C1 so I, I come back to This is. I claim I can take B1, the symbol, the left parametrics in uh, this fashion, C1. These are powers of, of R, real powers. R0, I mean 1, R, R2, and so on. Because when you calculate, so uh, this will give me uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. I will take, this will give me, uh, voila. To have the right, because B1 times A will be I know this is a symbol. Remember the, uh, the lemma about asymptotic expansions. This is a sequence of symbols with decaying degrees going to minus infinity. So you know that this serial designs, defines a symbol in the class S0. It defines a differential symbol in S0 times C1 times A that gives you exactly times 1 minus R, and this is 1 plus. You, you see it just in, in writing this uh, serial in this way, which is equal to n minus 1 I have uh, Uh, times 1 minus L, and this is exactly 1 this is in S minus N because you start at L times n. This is, sorry, in S0. So this symbol lies in S minus n. Like this one. 
So for every n, for every n, this product is in is equal to one plus something which is in S minus n. And that means that the composition is equal to identity plus something which is of order minus infinity. We did nothing, it's just symbolic calculus. The composition of the differential operators gives this result. We don't know, until now, we don't know uh, how uh, uh, these symbols in this class, minus infinity, how, they, how do they act on Sobolev space? We see it right now. Okay, so this, that was the, the inversion in case uh, uh, A is globally elliptic. No condition on C. This is true for every C. But without doing anything, just with hand, you can see that this condition can be relaxed for small Cs. If C is bounded, if this estimate, this assumption is satisfied for C large, you can continue, you can apply this result, the conclusion. Sure, because, look, assume now, we can relax, we can relax this condition to Foxy larger than some constant. Because if A satisfies this, this estimate, not for all C, I will replace A by Some function, I add a function, I can do it in this sense, just dependent on C, smooth, R is here, so my estimate, this is the C space, my estimate is two outside this ball, I add a function, positive, smooth, and supported in uh, the ball, the R plus one. So, outside this ball, the R plus one, you don't see this function. You can manage, you take C large enough, positive, large enough to ensure, because the problem here is for the small Cs. For the small Cs, you are sure that C over, you are sure it's bounded. <laughs> Continuous function. For C, depending on M and on R, no problem. Okay, so I will prove I will call this, this symbol a tilt. We can prove the same result with a tilt, but in a tilt, we will be one composed with a tilt is exactly A of X and D plus a C of X and D. And this is the function C, which is smooth, which is compactly supported, is in 
the, the symbol is in S minus infinity. Sure. Every symbol which is smooth and compactly supported is in S minus infinity. So this is in up S minus infinity. So you, you keep just the result uh, you need. You forget about any modification of the symbol for Xi bounded. Doesn't matter. They play no role. The same, the same argument allows you to prove that you can actually, in this, in this assumption, you can forget about the one. No role. Because all the game takes place for Xi large. C larger than constant R. For small R's, nothing happens. Nothing bad happens, except for uniqueness problem. And okay, we will come back. And uh, also, uh, you can assume that this estimate or the first one. Holds micro locally. Here, the ellipticity condition is global. For every x and every x, here, outside the fixed ball. Okay, no problem. But you can assume that this uh, uh, assumption, ellipticity assumption, is. Uh, satisfied microlocally near some point x0, x0 in the cotangent abundant, I mean in Rn times Rn minus uh, 0. But you have to pay a price. You can, in this case, you can inverse, you can find constructor parametrics only microlocally. And this one. For theorem 5, 2. Now, I have some x0 in Iran, some neighborhood denoted by v x0 some x0 and the conical neighborhood of x0 denoted by w not sure gamma x0 You have this estimate. You can assume that uh, you can replace C by C plus one for M. It's exactly the same. For C larger than some constant R. For X or C in okay. X is here and C is here. Not more, not more. Okay? So, what this result says is that you can invert, I mean, you can prove that there exist uh, left and right parameter X, let's say B1. times uh, composed with uh, A, which is equal to identity plus some 
I don't think it is within operator, but identity only on the maker local neighborhood where your symbol is elliptic. I, I, I would say, I would say this. Okay? But, of course, you can properly define this estimate, this uh, identity in this sense. Key and chi and psi are functions which are psi is compactly supported smooth function supported in v x zero. So, psi localizes near x zero. Chi localizes conically near C0. So in this microlocal neighborhood of X0, C0, this operator is identity. You see, because P is equal to 1, and K of D is exactly one micro locally near C0. Look, take for instance T of D, apply to you some distribution that gives you financial X C. Uh, Near C0, this, this is equal to 1. That is, near C0, you have just, so you have U. Near C0, since key is supported conically here, you can, you can, you can think to, to key as a function which is smooth, which is uh, homogeneous of uh, uh, degree zero for xi large. To localize near xi zero, you take the sphere S n minus one, xi zero, this point is xi zero of uh, norm one, for instance, and you take a neighborhood on the sphere and you localize Key is here, and you 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 ask to key to be homogeneous of order zero for C larger than one, for instance. No problem. You cut it uh, as you want near zero. And th this gives you exactly the same result as before, but just you have identity only on the microlocal neighborhood of X0, C0. These are the same calculus. The, the detailed calculus are in the notes. The, 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 the strategy is exactly the same. You can, you can add some functions to have a globally elliptic operator. You may you calculate the, the, the parametrics and you will find two terms, this result, and rest, remind that, that is uh, infinitely smoothing. This is wrong. I should write up of S minus infinity. These are operators, these are not symbols. I'm sorry, I will correct. I hope in, in the notes it's not wrong. Voila, in the notes it's it's right. It's up of s up of s minus infinity. So we can invert microlocally uh, symbols 
uh, differential operators. Just an example. Take the wave equation, all right, so your symbol is uh, minus, but I forget for the minus, 2 square minus c square. It can depend on x. You can have a metric here, but uh, it's not a problem. So if you take some 2, 0, c, 0, of course, it's elliptic if and only if We have not the same uh, norm. Absolute value of uh, two, two zero uh, is uh, different from the norm of xi zero. And in this point, you can, you can see, for instance, xi two. So here, you can take two zero xi zero here. You can invert the waves. Can invert microlocally the waves, the wave operator outside of the set 2, 0 equal to xi 0. What I will denote it is the general case where, where you take, for instance, dt square minus g equal 1 to n dg y. You take p of x. So the basis here is uh, it, what, what we denote by x there is t and x. The variable, the basis variable is t and x. The dual variable 2 and c is equal exactly uh, with minus, okay, plus the sum on eg of x cg. Okay, and you can invert, I will call car of box, the characteristic set of box, wave operator, this set simply, toxic, such that Outside this set, the box is invertible. Is that we call the characteristic set of the wave operator? All the all the bad news will come from this set. Also, all the good news will come from this set. We will see in details. OK. Uh, now, OK, 
what is the behavior of uh, an infinitely uh, uh, a symbol which is in the class S minus infinity. Actually, the, the corresponding to differential uh, operator is, as we said, infinitely smoothing. In this sense, it will continuously map the temperate distributions in uh, the class of C infinity functions, of course, still tempered. Because A, in, in any case, the true differential maps S, Schwartz uh, space, into itself, and by duality, S prime in S prime. So that continues, that, that's conserved. But if A is in this class, of all the minds infinity, it maps a temperate distribution in, uh, to a C infinity function. And uh, a, a compactly supported distribution to S. You, you have uh, an infinite gain of uh, derivative. So when you, when, you, when you have an identity like this, you can be happy because you can forget about the last term. It is smooth. Uh, how do you see it? I, I just, I just give an idea about the first, the first point. You, you just have to write the action of the differential operator. So you take A of order minus infinity, you take U of X in Schwarz space, and you calculate. This is the integral A of X and C, you had. Now, if you look carefully, if A, the symbol A of X and C, lies in this class, that gives you, 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 you just have to look the definition of a class S M. We call that A. Is in SM if the x, uh, sorry, the x beta the x alpha of A is bound by some constant. Okay. So this holds for any M. I will forget about x. I fix x and just take alpha equal to zero. So the x alpha as a function of x only is bound is of course of class C infinity and bounded by uh, this uh, power of x. That means that the function a, as function of xi, I will say, is in S of n in xi. That is the definition of S. That is also uniform with respect to x. And this field allows me to write as exponential uh, x t a of x and t in the duality s prime s. In this formula, 
x is fixed. Okay. Of course. <coughs> no. Je laisse ça tranquille. We will use that. Da, da, da. Ah, voilà, bien sûr. So you have this duality, and of course, this formula also, also takes sense for you in S prime. S prime acts on S. I mean, this is in S. Excuse me. I started with this. Now you can take u in S prime, u hat will be also in S prime, and this is in S with respect to xi. So this is a duality, an action of an element function of a distribution of S prime that acts on a, a function of, of S. And you know, you know how to bound it, how to estimate it. You can just, we still have to, to prove that it is smooth. Uh, you had that, that, that. The function that, please don't forget that this is a function of x. We have to prove that it is smooth. <coughs> so, okay, we, we do one derivative, it will work. The x alpha of f, it is, you had the x alpha of a of x and xi, tac, tac, this is duality s by s, and you calculate. I, I want to bound. to prove that it is smooth, okay? Now, when a temperate distribution acts on a function of S, you have to calculate, to uh, estimate the semi-norms. This action is in C. So you have to calculate the semi-norms in C here. And in C, uh, each time you derive in C, you will get powers of x. So sure that this is uh, 
less than some constant depending on alpha. Uh, I will say x. I think it should be true. When you derive here in C, please, when you, first you have to calculate this. Okay. We'll have, so we'll have some powers of C that will go on A. There is no problem because A is in S minus affinity, so it, it, it will eat all the powers of C. Never mind. But the problem is when you uh, derive uh, A also, you don't see any power of C. But after doing this, you have to take the semi norms in C. And this one will give you powers of X. This is bounded, so this function is smooth and bounded by some powers of x. And this is a temperate distribution. It's a function which is smooth with uh, uh, slow growth. Okay. So, uh, finally, uh, uh, the differential operator, which is in the class S minus infinity, uh, will send any tempered distribution, in particular the compactly supported distribution, in smooth function. It is infinitely smoothing. Uh, like I said, I exit. We can summarize now uh, all uh, the results we obtained. Finally, the support, uh, singular support of uh, A, if A is a, a symbol in the class SM, singular support of uh, A U is contained in singular support of U. We saw this because Look, when you take a point which is not here, near this point, you are sure that U is regular. So, we know that singular support. So, AU is also be uh, regular uh, because of... We already... This is this. Ah, voilà. A. A maps S into S. If X zero is not in singular support of U, okay. So there is some figure X U. That is here with phi locally supported, smooth and locally supported near. That's the definition. Okay, so you apply U, it's equal to uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. And this is in S, because you apply a differential, a differential operator to some function in D. 
of iron. But now, this one, look, A is applied to 1 minus phi u. You take phi equal to 1 near x0. You take phi equal to 1 here. And now, you conclude by multiplying by a well-chosen function psi, you take psi of x uh, supported in the set phi equal to what? I mean, psi is supported here. And you calculate This term is in S. This is in S, so this first term is here. Plus C of X, A, 1 minus phi of X, U. Just examine this symbol. Function, so the differential operator of order n, another function. This is the differential operator, whose symbol is exactly zero. The symbol, you, you know it. You, you, you have an, exp uh, an asymptotic expansion. You calculate the symbol. Okay. The first term is the product C A of X and C one min minus phi. Because of this, the first term is zero. And the other terms are also zero because the same property. So this symbol, this operator, has a zero symbol. That means that this operator, you can uh, write it in this way. It is, this symbol is in S minus infinity. It is infinitely smoothing. So, this is smooth. That means this is smooth. And this, this is exactly the definition of X0 is not in the, the singular support of a u. The, the, the argument applies exactly in the same way to the second line. You apply exactly the same argument, but this time, instead of taking localization function, Instead of applying, multiplying by a localization fu function, you apply a micro local uh, 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 differential operator localized near x0, x0. You, 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 you follow exactly the same strategy. For the second line, you do exactly the same, but here, you don't take a function. You take the differential operator of zero order P of X and D of zero order localized near the point omega zero, uh, which is not in the way front of you. So uh, the action of the differential operator doesn't increase the way front. It conserves the wave front. Okay? And uh, uh, we say that uh, the differential operator has uh, the pseudo local property. These are the only operator on the uh, space of distribution that 
conserves the wavefront. The only one. If you, if you, if you, if you, uh, for instance, it's not true for the fully integral operators. Some, uh, some semi-groups are not, are not good. Even if uh, they, they, they uh, expression uh, looks like to differential operators. Doesn't work. You can increase it. Bien sûr, oui, bien sûr, des, des opérateurs intégraux, bien sûr, bien sûr, toujours, bien sûr, oui, oui. This is specific of the differential operators. But the symbol uh, here, I, I said it at the beginning, we are working with the most simple class of operator, the most simple one. The symbol can be more complicated. When you derive with respect to x and t, you can, uh, for instance, lose some powers of x of x when uh, you take the derivative with respect to x. The classes SM rho delta of Ormander and the classes with, which are very bad. As for instance, the class SM. 1, 1, or say, SM, S0 of order 0, 1, 1. So when you derive with respect to X, with respect to T, you will, you will lose alpha powers of T. Gain beta powers of T and gain alpha powers of C, so with rho equal to delta, you have nothing, no gain. It's very bad. You cannot compose this operator. Okay, so uh, you have, uh, finally you have the same, uh, the same uh, properties uh, for the uh, wavefront Sobolev. It's not, it's, it's not uh, destroyed. It, it, it doesn't increase with the action of the differential operator. And of course, when you apply the inversion theorem, you see that if a point omega zero, x zero, x zero is not in the wavefront of AU, and if A is elliptic in this point, I mean, microlocally elliptic on this point. Okay, it's not globally elliptic, microlocally elliptic. Okay. So, uh, microlocally, x0, x0, all the x, x, e that are uh, uh, in the neighborhood of x0, x0 are not in the wave front of you. That is called the microlocal elliptic regularity. For, for, for this, you use the parametrics we have constructed. Okay, you use this, this one. You use this identity. If A, if A is elliptic in x0, x0, you know that you can find microlocal function that is equal to one, the symbol that is equal to one, like locally near x0, x0, and such that uh, the differential operator associated to this symbol, b1, x, uh, and x, uh, satisfies this, this inversion. It, is, it, it gives you a, a, a left parametrics of A. This, you see, this, Affinity smoothing rest doesn't play any role. So, if you have a distribution and differential operator 
of any order that is that satisfies, uh, for instance, A x d u is smooth, so u will be smooth as long as A is not zero. If x zero x zero is not a zero of the symbol A, you are sure that mechanically in this point, near this point, u will be smooth. Uh, also, for the Sobolev wave front, you have a gain of m derivative. So, for instance, for the waves, for the waves, each direct calculation take a solution of the waves that is For instance, zero, and assume u is in L2 of, uh, I will say, times m. So you are sure that u is in H1 uh, near any, any point, uh, sorry, in H2. Uh, make a local linear and at any point omega zero that is not in that is omega zero is uh, with you are sure that you are H2 near any point which is not in the characteristic manifold. The, 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 the zero set of the uh, wave symbol. The wave symbol is two square minus C square equal to zero. You are sure to, to, to be with maximal uh, regularity. You gain to two degrees. So, this is uh, summarized in this result. If P is to differential operator with smooth coefficients, if U is a distribution, uh, uh, car P is equal to the set of zeros of the principal symbol, principal symbol, okay? Uh, this is the characteristic set of P. So you have the inclusion. You know that wave front of PU is contained in the wave front of U. This is for free. But now we gain that this set this set, the wave front of you, you have to look for this wave front in the union of Carpe and the wave front of PU. I mean, if a point omega zero, x zero, x zero, if omega zero is not here, I mean, if PU is smooth near this point, microlocally, and omega zero is not here, it's not a zero of PM, you are sure that U is microlocally smooth. Inversion. Parametrics, left or right, no problem. Because you can uh, uh, take the bracket it up. And the same, of course, uh, holds for the uh, Sobolev wave front. Here you have to just to, to, to see the, the order of gain. If P is of order M, you, you have a gain of M. Okay. Just here. Well, uh, this is the example I talked about. We take the waves 
for instance, uh, we, 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 we saw the, this case the, f the first day, the first slides. You, you consider the wave equation on the cylinder. You have a small omega uh, sub open set of sub, uh, an open subset of, of omega, and uh, you assume that u is, is a wave uh, and uh, that it is stationary on the small cylinder. Dt u is uh, is uh, zero on the small cylinder. Here, you have your cylinder here. This is omega, and this is small omega times t. You assume that dt u is equal to zero here. Okay, you 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 start with u. You start with u in L two. Uh, uh, we assume we assume that DTU is in L2 of the small cylinder. Okay, I will I will see now. This is an equation. This is an equation. DTU equal to F in L2. Okay. So you apply make a look at elliptic theorem to both. Box operator, you have an equation, and dt. This is an operator of order two. So we will, you will gain two derivatives if you are on the elliptic outside of the characteristic set. Okay, so over zero t small the small cylinder zero t uh, times omega the two characteristic sets are disjoint there is no intersection because here this set is given by two square minus x square equal to zero uh, this characteristic set is given by two equal to zero so the intersection will give you two equal to xi equal to zero which is the null section with doesn't doesn't play any role in the regularity because for to xi the, the copper to xi bounded all the distribution are analytic no problem of smoothness so you are sure that you you will gain over omega you are sure that you will gain uh, u is better than l2 it will be okay, one degree. The, 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 the order of the order of DT. Okay. So uh, you, 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 you pass from L2 to H1. That's, that's how we 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 prove that the invisible solution are uh, necessarily zero. Okay, so now we have uh, seen the way from the action of Sobolev spaces, of uh, differential operators on Sobolev spaces, the action of differential operators on the way from how uh, uh, do uh, differential operators uh, Conserved way front, they do not increase it. Okay. Now, uh, the goal is to to see how during the evolution, how the way front, where it is precise, precisely localized. So, this is done. Done. Also with this. Now the goal is to more precisely follow the singularities. Okay, just one picture. To state the problem. Hello.
T equal to zero. Think to this uh, example, uh, think you are in R3, just to fix uh, ideas. So T equal to zero, and here is R3. And here is the ball centered in zero and of radius R. You start, you write your equation, and you start with data in this ball, compactly supported data, just to fix idea. Okay? You know that the solution will be uh, supported in this code. Okay. If the data u0, u1 are smooth, you know your solution is smooth for any type. So smooth in the future and also in, in the past. Assume you now you put a singularity in some point for u0 or for u1. I don't, don't, uh, don't matter. How will this singularity move with the time? Very simple question. Very simple question. You can do very simple uh, exercise. Waves are difficult. It's much more easy to, to work with half waves. So, for instance, uh, okay, L let us say, minus or plus or okay okay it's a halfway you can calculate everything you can see everything G, I, 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 I would denote like this, dx. <laughs> so the problem is to see how this singularity uh, moves. We know that the singularity lives in Carpe, or general uh, differential operators. And we will show that they are essentially car carried by the Hamiltonian field attached to P. Okay, so I have time to introduce this uh, concept. We will, please, for the moment, we work in uh, the whole space. Even I, I, I write omega, I will be away from the boundary. We will, I hope we will have time, we will see what happens at the boundary, but uh, uh, phenomena are much more complicated. But okay, we can do uh, many things. So you take a, a function, smooth function, real valued on Rn times Rn, P of x and x, the notation is not, is not uh, I will say, innocent, okay, because we think too simple. So, the Hamiltonian field or bicaratetic field HP attached to P is this vector field, simply the sum dP uh, over dxg, d by dxg minus dP dxg, d uh, dxg. It's a vector field on R to N. And P is uh, smooth, so these coefficients are smooth. So I can uh, solve, I can find the uh, integral curves of HP, which are called the bicaratetic curves of P. These are the integral curves of the Hamiltonian field HP. These are maximal solution, xs, xs, of this uh, differential uh, system. 
de G point, de P vai de G, e se G point moins de, de P, mais de P uh, vai de G, and we the, starting from uh, some point x0, x0 of uh, R I, R to I. keep the idea uh, clear enough, look, example, I will take n equal to 2, and, okay, R, T, X, okay. So, this is a symbol that doesn't depend on T and X. It's a symbol of waves on RN with constant coefficients. So, I write the Hamiltonian field. The equation R, so, I have here T, x to t, each one is in r. t dot is equal to dp over d2, 2, x dot dp over dx minus 2 x 2 dot and x dot are zero because the symbol doesn't depend on time, neither on, 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 uh, on space. So, 2 and t are constants. So, the bicarbonatic curve, gamma of s, will be of the form. I will uh, start, for instance, from, I will start from the point 0, 0, 1, 1. 1, 1 is in the characteristic set. Okay, so that will give me here, a T is equal to 2S, uh, X minus 2S, okay, and 2 and T are constant. Here is A bicarbonatic curve issued from some, some point in the characteristic set. Okay, look, I finished the example. I, I will come back to A, B. I will take this one. You take the, the same, the same the, the process. You will find, you, you start from the same point, which is in the characteristic set also. You will find that, 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 that. Of course, these uh, curves are global. S is uh, in R. You see that when S travels in R, the two curves describe the same geometric set. Okay. We will come back. First remark, please. As I told from the beginning, we, 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 we try uh, to work on RAN, on bounded domain, and also on uh, manifolds. So we try to uh, produce results that resist to change of variable that are geometric. 
data intrinsic. The Hamiltonian field has a, a, an intrinsic definition. It is the only uh, vector field, is the only vector field that uh, represents the differential of P with respect to uh, sigma uh, form on, uh, on T star uh, Aran. Aran times Aran is exactly uh, the quotient bundle. It is a symplectic uh, manifold, of course. You have a symplectic form, which is the derivative of the, the, the Liouville form is this one. G. The XG. And the external derivative, which is sigma, is, uh, I'm not sure for the sign. And this gives you something like this. I, I think I think the matrix is this one. I'm not sure for the sign. Sorry. So when you have a linear a linear form on R to n, you are sure you can represent it by a fixed vector v. Uh, sorry. HP. For each V, DP applied to V, DP is a linear form, is a differential of P. Okay? DP applied to V is here you put HP and here you put V. It works. Sure. It's the only vector that satisfies this fact. It's a kind of Ries representation theorem. It works because you have a, a symplectic structure. Okay, I will finish with this. Uh, now, uh, of course, uh, you can do this, to this, you apply this, this vector field to P. You will find, you will find zero. If you calculate HPP, you will find DP, DXG, DXG, DP, DXG minus the same thing. So it will be zero. That means that your, uh, 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 your Hamiltonian P is constant along the integral uh, curves of HP. P is constant along the bicarotic curve. In particular, if a bicarotic curve starts from the characteristic set, it will stay in it. It will not leave the characteristic set. In other words, the characteristic set is, uh, you see, you have your characteristic set here, car P, it's like this. All these are bicarotic curves. Of, of P. The wave front will travel on these curves. If this point is in the wave front, all the curves will stay in it. If this point is not in the wave front, so will F or CMV. If this point is not in the wave front, it's a good point. All these point, all these curves is a good curve. This, this picture is far from uh, the boundary. We don't touch, for the moment, we don't touch the boundary. Because at the boundary, now, uh, I didn't define what does it mean to be in the wave front. Uh, these examples, OK, just to explain. The same example, huh? you see, wave, wave symbol, you can calculate. This, this, uh, this 
symbol writes, of course, like this. It's the wave symbol multiplied by an elliptic symbol. And if Q is elliptic, P and PQ have the same Michalacic curves, the same, but traveled with different speed. It's a change of variables. Because you see, a zero of this symbol is a zero of P, and conversely, because Q is elliptic. So this will allow us to, when you, when, you, when you want to follow singularity of a, a solution of a PD, which is, you see, you have PU equal to zero. You, you want to follow singularity. P is complicated. I can divide it by any elliptic symbol to reduce the problem to one or the differential uh, operator. And I study. I change nothing. The bicatastic are the same. I change nothing. So you see, we, we reduce, we reduce, we reduce. I understand that, uh, that uh, uh, sometimes you can uh, lose the, the beginning of, uh, of the problem, but uh, it, it works in, in this sense. Uh, OK, so uh, uh, tomorrow I, we will finish. Uh, uh, we will see our Mandel theorem. The first result was without boundary in the free space. Uh, 67, 6, 7. 11 years after, 11, 12 years after, Melrose Ostrand. So this result is exactly what I said here. If a point, if a point is in the wave front, you assume that PU is, is smooth. If a point is not in the wave front, all the bicatalytic, which is unique, of course, because bicatalytic curves are integral curves. They are unique, Cauchy Lipschitz. All the bicatalytic curve is outside the wave front. So a bicatalytic curve gamma is completely in the wave front or completely out. This is Hormonda theorem. No boundary, free space. That, that was not very, very, at this time. OK, that was not the trivial. We have the same thing for the Sobolev wavefront. When you, when, you, when you have to measure the gain of regularity. We, we will see it uh, after. So, 71. The, the, that was published at this, at this time, but that was known before. Uh, 78 Melroche Ostrand, up to the boundary. 10 years, a little bit more, up to the boundary for the Saint Anthony wavefront. For the Sobolabi, it was a little bit harder, but uh, okay. We say uh, sometimes after, not 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 very long. Okay, we will uh, continue tomorrow. Voilà. Sobolev, wave front. So for the uh, wave front, you have. If a point is not in the wave front, all the bicatastic is good propagation of regularity. If a point is in the wave front of you. All the bicatastic is shoot from omega is in the wave front propagation of the bad news of the singularity. You are in the wave front, you are not a, a good point. Voila, thank you. <laughs> Can you go to the previous uh, example, previous slide 43? 
yeah here so this gamma s should be 4 s cube minus 4 s cube right shouldn't be excuse me here uh, this gamma s gamma. for the second example gamma of s yes. yeah gamma of s shouldn't it be 4 s cube uh, minus 4 s cube because we are 4 s cube 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 yeah no 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 uh, I, I took uh, two, I start from one, one. So you are here, you see, in the second case, in second case you have uh, ta, 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 the derivative is four and minus four. This other system. Uh, it should be four, four Z cube. Uh, cube, sorry, cube, yes, uh, yeah. sorry, cube and cube. Yes. When you, uh, now, you, you know that two and xi are uh, constant, equal to one. So, one, two, right. So, you have four s minus four s. And this is the same, the same, uh, it's a straight line, what? It's, uh, but we, you, you, you work with different speed. You can see it in the differential equation. You, we, you change all the variable. The time, it, it, the s, you change the s and uh, you will. Uh, by characteristic? Yes. We, 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 we. The people that uh, that study differential systems, uh, differential equation, UGEs, uh, uh, call, call them integral curves. These are integral curves of, of some in, 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 uh, uh, field, vector field. You have a vector field, HP, you integrate, you solve, so you have an integral curve of HP, okay? So now, in PDE, we know that the set of zeros of the, uh, the, the principal symbol is important. Outside of this set, things are good. Operator is elliptic, you can invert, you can, okay. So I think the, the, this, the, uh, this name of characteristic set is old. Now, when you uh, see with the curves, when we study the curves, by characteristic, I really, I do not, don't know who, who, who was the first to do. So the by characteristic curves, this cur the, the, we essentially work with the nil by characteristic, because a by characteristic is an integral curve. It does not necessarily live in the characteristic set. Okay? Along gamma, P is not necessarily equal to, to zero. But implicitly, people, when they talk about gamma, uh, everybody thinks we are in the characteristic set. Because outside, nothing happens. You see, when, when I, I see uh, PDE, the characteristic set is uh, uh, the place where uh, you have to, to make analysis. Otherwise, you are sure your solution uh, is not a problem. It is smooth. That's, uh, I think, but I'm, I'm, it, it's not a justification. Really, the origin of, of uh, uh, this word. Uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. They exist. They exist. They are unique. They are. So the minim, the minimal, uh, uh, the minimal regularity of P.
here. You see, here I take P smooth, no problem. Uh, think to P as differential operator. A differential operator, you will not have problems with Xi. You see, when you take first. We, for differential operator, we always work with the principal symbol. We consider HPM. So we can forget about Anna first. And the symbol PM is equal to, okay, this function is smooth with respect to Xi. So no problem of regularity. So the problem is in the coefficient. The, you, you have to solve. And you see, when you, when you write your Hamiltonian field, here you have already taken the derivative with respect to X. So, if A alpha of X is in, for instance, C2, this coefficient is C1. And you know, you can uh, uh, solve, uh, apply the cauchy lipschitz theorem when your coefficients are Lipschitz. So, a priori, you cannot go below for A alpha, you cannot go below W2 infinity. Here, uh, the uh, HPM will be Lipschitz, I will say. You can solve. If, for instance, A alpha is C1, C1, HPM will have coefficients in C0. You can still solve Euler uh, piano, but the solution, the bicarities are not unique. And you see, are not unique. That means that if a point is uh, in the front, uh, in the way front, how will, uh, how will it uh, move? The, the, the transport of the singularity, bad news, or, or of the regularity, good news, you have from one point, you have, for instance, two curves. Okay, this point is bad. Okay. Like this, you see, because at this point, is the same. Okay, but the singularity will go there, this curve will be good or not. Uh, uh, will you have two singularities that spread? Uh, so, this is a problem. This is a problem. This is a problem. Uh, I hope uh, tomorrow I will have time to explain something like this. Merci.